So hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Secrets of the Viz. Today I have a very special guest, Andrea, who is here to talk a little bit about her The Expanse Viz. So over to you, Andrea, to give a short intro about yourself. Hi, so I'm Andrea. I work as an analytics consultant at the Information Lab uh, in London. I've been in data analytics for about two years now. Prior to this, for a while, I owned my own business. And my background is in business law. So business law is very interesting. What was the pivoting point for you to switch from that to... The pivoting point for me was when I set up a business during the pandemic. So I didn't really know which way to go. I think that was kind of a confusing time for a lot of people. I set up the business. It was e-commerce. I didn't know how this was going to go, if I was going to stick with it, if it was going to go well. But I did know that I was going to figure out through the whole process what I wanted to do in the future. And the bits that I enjoyed most out of the work were the market research, the analytics and the design bits, because I did design my own marketing material, my own logos and stuff like that. I decided that, okay, if this doesn't work out or for some reason, this is what I want to do. So my family lives in Romania and I had to move there for six months, them out. I decided to hit pause on the business. And when I came back, I started looking into data visualization, information design, data analytics, and other stuff like that. And I came across the information lab, which I was like, oh, this is cool. I knew about Tableau, but I hadn't used Tableau before. So all of my metrics and stuff like that were done in Excel. Um, I mean, it's a, it's an evolution for most people in, in terms of us learning data visualization. Excel is probably like the first foray for first many folks, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I learned Tableau specifically for the information lab. And I kind of liked it. Like, okay, you can do cool stuff with this. That's cool. So it's looking at your portfolio as well on Tableau Public. And uh, you have a lot of work done there on Workout Wednesdays and Makeover yeah. Monday. But what I realized was something really interesting where in December last year, you started to do slightly more creative stuff. You started with the yeah. Christmas fist and then this yeah. the expense. So was that something that you are trying out for now? Or like has been it's something not, that it's, has... It's something that I've always wanted to do. I just never focused on it that much and the christmas one was quick to do like oh christmas data set okay let's have some fun it, it was my way to wind down and relax but the expanse one i worked on it an hour a week ever since i think i started late summer so it, it wasn't something that i did in one day or in one weekend a lot of the times i had to okay where did i leave this oh i had this to do okay let's do that and if i had time i'd work on it if not then no. Well, that's so interesting. It, so it's been a, a good couple of months in the making. Yeah, it was like whenever I had time or felt like working on it, I didn't put any pressure on myself to just finish this by this time and stuff like that, right. which is why I think it turned, I really like it. <laughs> yeah, a, a lot of folks in the community liked it as well. I, I think that's one of the reasons why it turned out so good. I think probably if I would have set myself a deadline, like, okay, I have three days. Let's do this. I don't think it would have turned out that well. <laughs> yeah, well, good things need time to brew. <laughs> so how did that whole idea come about? Like, is that your um, favorite TV show? Yes, it's one of my favorites. I'm a huge fan of sci-fi. Mm. So when the Data Plus TV challenge came out, I took the starter workbook and started looking into it. My short list was really, really long. <laughs> I couldn't decide. I wanted to do something on Game of Thrones, but then I said, okay, Game of Thrones, kind of old. They kind of ruined the ending for me, so. I'm, I'm with it, you on that. Yeah, they, they ruined the ending for a lot of people. So I want to do something on The Walking Dead. That would have been pretty cool. Then I decided on The Expanse because I had just watched it again over the summer. I think I watched that series three or four times already. I was trying to build a chart that looks a bit sci-fi if that makes sense it does look sci-fi <laughs> yeah <laughs> so th that's the reasoning behind going for the expanse so what is it that drew, drew you to the expanse because you said you watched it like three to four times it's a really cool story 
I think it's really forward thinking. Apart from the fact that it was one of the few shows that were saved due to the fans, the fans pitched, please save our show. We want to watch this. This doesn't usually happen in entertainment. There's a lot of shows that just have one season, even if people liked it. But um, I like the story because it's basically set in outer space where humanity already colonized Mars, but they also colonized the asteroid belt. So you have people living on Mars, people living on Earth, and people living in the asteroid belt. Mars and Earth are fighting for resources within the asteroid belt, and the people getting hurt are the people living in the asteroid belt. So it's pretty political. <laughs> you wouldn't expect a sci-fi show to be that political. But basically, it's about the crew of a, of a ship that kind of goes through a lot of adventures, and they uncover some political plots. I also like the fact that from a scientific perspective, it's pretty accurate as to how things would actually happen in space. So moving within a spaceship, this is how physics would dictate that you would move. I think there are some unrealistic bits to it, but mostly they try to stick to the physics as much as possible. Yeah, I mean, the, the problem with sci-fi in many cases is where they try to stray too far from reality and people find it yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it's nice to see a very grounded sci-fi show that makes you believe mm, that is possibly going to happen. Yeah, this is not that far stretch, let's say. This is not, you, you don't require mental gymnastics to see this happening. <laughs> That's cool. So maybe you can show us yeah. what you have done. So I'll start off with the inspiration for this viz. This is from Rochelle Chibber on electricity generation per capita. And I really liked the way that he did this. And my second one came from one of our coaches where she jittered some bar charts and called it a jitterfly chart. I thought this looked really, really cool. And basically, I tried to use the jitter here within these bars to show the differences in ratings per episode for each of the um, production companies. And I tried to use Rochelle's method of making the length of the lines according to the rating. The way that this was built was actually using Tristan and Jessica's Davis advanced viz generator. A lot of people in the community have used this and it's now part of the extensions in Tableau. But what I used was the tree, created the nodes uh, in a file. I uploaded the file with the structure and uh, initially I started with downloading um, a Tableau desktop file. Then I went into CSVs and I modified that file a lot to get to a V4 in the actual viz. So it was tweaked a lot. Basically how I got to this gradient here was just by playing around. So I didn't even think that I would end up with this final look. I played around with it until it looked sci-fi enough <laughs> to say, okay, this looks like it represents something <laughs> from outer space. It does. I also yeah. love the hover actions that you have built into the dashboard. So if you hover over the different points of it, it actually has the little dot that appears and the yeah. middle part actually also uh, changes the total number of votes. I thought that was a really nice touch. Yeah, this was added at the end, especially this with the dot to signal it here. So if you watch the series, you know that at some point, due to some alien technology, a ring appears in space. Now, initially I wanted to put that ring here, but I just thought, okay, that might be too much. Just keep it simple. So this little bit here that zooms into the top rated ones, this was inspired by this bit here. I like this one a lot. Ah, okay. Except he did it from bar to bar. The way I did it was from bar to dot plot, but yeah, it, it was inspired by that. I really like the way that it zooms in on a specific area to just display. I love that it adds more context, but not overwhelming your users because it's just like a very nice touch at the site. Yeah, I had a lot of issues when I built this thinking you have to, I want to tell a story without adding a lot of words because I really wanted to highlight the fact that this show was actually saved because of fans. Otherwise, they wouldn't have had six seasons. It would have stuck to three and that's it. It never would have had an ending. How How would you say your biggest challenge is in building this viz? Uh, the biggest challenge? So these little bars, I wanted to build them as one sheet. That was my biggest challenge. I never overcame it. 
there's a blank container on top of it to prevent people from clicking on it. This is basically a bar chart. So a stack bar chart of um, production company, distribution company, but these little dots are individual charts. At one, I tried to figure it out for a couple of days and then I was like, okay, do I really want them? in just one chart and i was like no nah, i want it to look nice and i want to finish it yeah. so if I it works it works out. yeah i took the lazy way out and i built them individually and then just covered it up but yet that was my biggest challenge <laughs> we've been under the rug do you know andy cribble yes <laughs> so recently he has a couple of tutorials going into map layers and it's really interesting because I think what you're trying to achieve with the bars and the jitter plot within the bars itself can be easily done with map layers. You just need to figure around how to build each of the different pieces. But Andy Cribble does have a uh, really good starter videos to get you to dip your toes a little bit into that. So if you're interested, I can send you those links after this. Yes, please. But yeah, I thought about map layers, but to be honest, I was like, okay, I really wanted to publish this at the point I felt I've already been working on this for a few months at that point. I really want to get this done. So is there anything that you're currently working on that you want to tease the audience with? Actually, at the end of January, I started working on a Google Analytics dashboard, but I'm still at the data prep stage with that. That's kind of my next upcoming personal project that I hope will be ready a lot quicker than this expensive is was. <laughs> now, this is a lot of work. Kudos to you on getting this uh, off. So I think we have everything we need from your viz. Thank you again, Andrea, for spending time with us to talk through this amazing viz. Uh, and we'll be looking forward to see your Google Analytics dashboard soon. <laughs> All right. I hope everyone learned something from this and we'll see everyone at the next episode. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye.